Located below the word spirit is a picture of two scared little girls. The photo, taken in 1912, catches the sisters in a moment after being taken away from neglectful parents. Hidden under the surface, their story of vulnerability is covered up. Buried underneath the black circular disc, fragments of newspaper stories emerge from a hundred years ago. Held within the layers of information, news about the mundane details of everyday life are contained. Revolving around the crescent moon, spirit is in place to support the turning points in life, birth, disillusionment, epiphany, and death. Between 1885 and 1900, Charles Van Schaik, a professional photographer, captured the image of a wild-eyed woman with messy hair, an unusual portrait from a time when shutter speeds dictated stiff, rigid, and motionless expression. As a way to make her visible, I painted her face large. She's from a time when the teller of tales rarely came from a woman's viewpoint. Her expression reveals a woman who's not in charge of her life. The grid of squares is created from photos taken with a brownie camera and found in a young woman's photo album dated from 1913 to 1918. Lively and fun-loving, they are in contrast to this disturbing moment caught in Charles Van Shake's photo. Under the surface, I buried images of mothers, babies, and children as a way of honoring a creator that is birther as well as begetter. She invites us to the inside of things, into depth, into mystery. She stands behind a spiral passage. The design is taken from stone carvings found at the megalithic passage tombs of Newgrange in Ireland. It is thought that the triple spiral is a symbol of birth, life, and death. The grid of spirals hold, in the center, the series of phi, the golden proportion, the repetition and rhythm of nature's unfolding and growth. Below the mandala sits Black Madonna, crossing her arms in prayer. She is womb world, yani, in the inside of things that awaken regenerative powers. She is connected to a pattern of spirals that move up to the endless knot, an ancient symbol representing the interweaving of time and movement. Inside the mandala, a brown disc rotates around the center. Buried underneath are newspaper fragments that hold words of advice to women about homemaking. Inside another disc, you can touch the words and numbers that float in and out of view. In the center is the Japanese word mu. Buddhist thinkers interpret mu to mean that all categorical thinking is a delusion. Yes and no are both right and wrong. This painting creates for me a philosophical map where eros and logos the holographic and the linear combined to form movement and stability. Aisha Abraham Duhalo was stoned to death on October 27, 2008 in Kismayo, Somalia. She was 13 years old. She was raped by three men and accused of adultery. 50 men stoned her to death while 1,000 male spectators watched. This mandala is the Garga Datu, or womb world, and it represents sacred space. The Aztec dragon, or Urboros, is swallowing its tail. It's an ancient symbol of death, rebirth, and regeneration. The dragon's tail holds a photo of Aisha. 
In the background, a repeating pattern of figures with the word yoni in their bellies express compassion. The painting revolves around the ancient African concept of mat, which means truth, justice, righteousness, reason, life, soul, mind, pureness, and correctness. The circle of ravens act as a mediator between the monster that has swallowed Aisha and the inner sacred center. During the process of moving through this painting, I felt I could touch Aisha. This piece is dedicated to honoring her story and remembering her life. My grandma Agnes was born out of wedlock in 1894 in Hudiksvall, Sweden. At 13 years old, she left her mother Clara and traveled alone to Minnesota. As a wife and mother, Agnes is pictured below the circle at a family gathering that includes my mother Jerry as a young girl. From family tree DNA, genealogy by genetics, I have my mitochondrial DNA information. Below the image of my mother is a copper vessel, a holy grail that contains the four nucleotides that create DNA, adenine, cytosine, guanine, and thymine. The structure of heredity connects all of us to mitochondrial Eve, who lived between 150,000 to 170,000 years ago in East Africa. At the top of the painting, curved around open hands, a disc containing my mitochondrial sequence, A, C, T, and G, connects me to a specific brand of the human family tree, which is Halplo Group J. There is no path to my great-grandfather's DNA. His history is buried without a trace. I buried the image of a cycladic female goddess idol from 2500 BC under a circular Arabian ornament design copied from a door in the mosque in Egypt. She was a guide for the dead to the afterlife. On the edge of the circular design are names of female deities from different cultures and times. Over a commotion of images and text, I painted a grid of squares holding image of the nautilus shell, a symbol of perfection, and the pretzel shape, an ancient symbol of prayer. The guide and mediator through this map is the raven. In mythologies of indigenous peoples of the Pacific Northwest Coast, the raven is the creator of the world. Ravens are also linked to the void, to transformation and death. In the lower left-hand corner of the map is a newspaper from the Minneapolis Journal. The date is August 17, 1929 two months away from the stock market crash. People reading this had no idea how vulnerable they were. The Great Depression was just around the corner. Paint splatters like smashing particles create random patterns in dark space. Above and below the surface of the painting, Detailed medical illustrations converge with Lutheran hymns and float in and out of view. The Egyptian goddess Nephthys points up to a cosmic dissonance. She is the guide to the netherworld, protecting and caring for the dead and acting as a bridge between life and death. Her wings are outstretched as a symbol of protection. Measuring time, like a cosmic clock, an ancient instrument, the astrolab calculates the altitude of the stars and planets. First used in the 14th century, it was an aid in navigation. Her title is a resh and means queen, and her name is Puabam, meaning word of the father. 
She was 40 years old when she died 4,600 years ago. She was buried, placed on a raised platform, wearing an elaborate gold headdress and beaded cape. Her royal tomb was located in Ur, an important Sumerian city in ancient Mesopotamia, located at the site of the modern Tel El Mukiar in Iraq. She stands next to an early Mesopotamian image of the Tree of Life. In Babylonian mythology, the Tree of Life was a magical tree that grew in the center of paradise. It is the prototype of the tree described in Genesis, the biblical tree of knowledge. It is also the symbol from which the Egyptian, Islamic, and Kabbalistic Tree of Life concepts originated. Underneath everything, I buried fragments of information about chromosomes, classes of DNA, gene mapping, and genetic aspects of development. <laughs>